have this fog plane that we created before. It's just a simple static plane with a nice depth effect, and you can see if we look at it sideways, it loses all of its magic. Um, but we're going to take this and we're going to add these clouds that will across the surface. And uh, we're also going to create this particle system, something like that, and that'll just give it some nice depth. Alright, so let's double click the uh, shader that we created last time. And uh, first, let's create a texture node. So that'll be T left click. Connect that to Albedo. And uh, we could use the dissolve guide with this. So compile that. And make sure we're using this one. Uh, but it doesn't really look that great. I don't like the black areas, and I think the white areas are a little bit too bright. So to fix this, um, we're going to get rid of the black areas. So we're going to find that texture here. And I think for you, it's somewhere in the Amplify Shader Editor uh, default textures. But I moved it into my own textures folder. And I'm just going to show that in, in the inspector and edit with GIMP. And I don't care about that. Um, so now what I'm going to do is open up this color select tool, move the threshold up to about, let's say, 135, select all the black, and control X. That looks like too much. Why don't we drop it down to 124? And I think something like that will serve us better. We want to make sure that it actually cuts to transparency though, because right now it's cutting to white, we need to cut to transparency. So I'm going to right click on this and add alpha channel. Now when I cut, you can see this is all transparent. And I want the clouds to be large enough. Yeah, so something like that will probably serve us better. So then I'm going to export that as a TGA dissolve guide 5 dot TGA okay and now go back to unity it should pop up here dissolve guide 5 we need to make sure that this has alpha so RGB color alpha is transparency check and apply now if we drop that onto our shader editor, you can see how this changes. Compile. Now we just have the white spots and the solid color. Um, we're going to add a texture coordinates node. Connect those there and see how that changes things. And that's still exactly the same. Why don't we add a panner node? UV, UV, and now it's panning really fast, so why don't we double click that and set this to like a 0.1 and a 0.01, or like a 0.05 maybe. Compile, and now you can see those clouds moving across the surface. They're kind of hard to see, why don't we take this and just bring it down. Compile again, and uh, I think I'll do a multiply. Multiply this one by this one. And compile. And why don't we duplicate that node and connect that to the emission. So the fog highlights we can set to whatever color we want. And then the emission we can set to a different color. And I think that I want to do a, a pan effect for the emission as well. So I'm actually just going to delete this color. Move this panner back. Duplicate this node. And for this texture, I want to give this a... Why don't we try dissolve 4. 
connect that to a mission, connect the UV coordinates here, and compile. And uh, I don't quite like the way that, that this took over. So why don't we multiply this by something fairly small, so like 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, compile. Make sure we connect these. And uh, I don't like how the darker areas are so dark, so we're going to clamp this. And this is going to allow us to create a minimum brightness, so why don't we say like 0 0.1. Oh, and a max of 1. Compile. So even in, even in the dark series, it has to be at least uh, 0.1 brightness. And uh, why don't we set this back to like 0.5. Alright, so those clouds are looking better. Uh, I think that we lost pretty much all of our color here. And that looks alright. This panner is moving too fast, so let's set that down to like 0.05 and 0.02. Compile. And uh, if we wanted to, we could um, we could probably set this to a property somehow. Oh, well, maybe not. I guess there's no way to expose those values. Anyway, um, we could we could set a, a time here. So this could be like a time compile. And that would that would give us more control over how fast it's moving. Alright, so we have the clouds. Um, I'm fairly happy with the way they look. Seems like they're still moving a little bit fast, but that's okay. Um, so why don't we now take this and move on to the particle system. So once again, I'm just going to compile and save. It's not going to let me save because I'm in play mode, so leave play mode and save. And now let's create some particle systems. So I'm just going to use this as a reference. Um, I really like the way this one turned out, so I'm just going to right click and create a new particle system. And I'll call it fog particles one. All right. So before um, I set the duration to five, and basically I wanted a long duration so that um, things kind of slowly fade in and out. And uh, you can't see it right now, so let's set that to about there. Uh, and I'm just going to create a second inspector. So why don't we add tab inspector? Drop that there, and th and this is just going going to allow us to edit both at the same time. So I've got my previous fog particle system selected. I'm going to lock my inspector, and now we have the new one selected over here. So why don't we just go down the list? Pre-warm. Um, basically, what that does is, uh, if your particles, um, let's say they start here and they start emitting outward, the pre-warm option means as soon as they start emitting it's as if they have been emitting for a long time so you're not going to see like a stream of particles come out like that you're just going to see it in this state from the beginning um, so i have that checked start lifetime i want that to be 100 because I, I want my particles to last a long time they're going to slowly fade in and fade out but you don't want to see clouds like popping in and popping out really fast um, for start speed this is a I think it's random between two constants. And uh, basically, we want it to move fairly slow and uh, just have a little bit of randomization there. Start size, we want that to be pretty large because it's obviously the clouds. And uh, set it to kind of a green color. What else? Okay, so that's it for the 
um, main branch here. Now emission controls the shape like that they're appearing in. So we want kind of like a giant box here for the particles to appear in. Um, so I set this to box 50 to 50. And again, that, that just makes them appear in this giant square. All right, now, I, I'm not randomizing anything here. Oh yeah, and then right over time, th this has to be pretty low, so 0.8, because we don't want to see them like popping in and out really fast. They're, they're clouds, they're going to move really slow. Um, if you wanted to, you could use a burst here, and basically the burst means um, 30 pop out at a time, so, so like our, our time frame is 5 seconds, so every 5 seconds we would pop out 30 particles, that's what that means, um, but obviously we're not going to use that for clouds. Um, we talked about the shape, and then... Uh, What's next? Color over lifetime. So this this is what I used to make them fade in and out. Because right now you can see they're kind of like flashing. Like one appeared one appeared here, one just, one just disappeared here. That doesn't look good. Um, so using this color over lifetime, we can create this kind of fade in to green, darken, and fade out. So I'm just going to click on that. And it's supposed to open up a color selector, but it's not for some reason. Uh, oh, well I need to hit this checkbox actually. So check that. Now this is available. And uh, the bottom is the alpha, and the or the, I'm sorry, the top is the alpha, and the bottom is the color. So we can create nodes just by clicking. So right right at the beginning, we have this node here. We're gonna set the alpha all the way down, so it's completely transparent. And uh, right here, now it's fully fully opaque. Right here, it should be fully transparent again. And uh, right here, it can be fully opaque. So it, so now we have. Oh, I didn't mean to create that one. Um, now we have. Fade in, solid, fade out. And down here we can choose the color. And so if we want to, we could just do like the same color the whole way through. Uh, or, or we can play with it. Alright, so I, I chose one color here and now it's all the way through. Um, or we could make it like darker at the end. And so the the newer particles are like greener and brighter and then the older particles are bluer and darker if we wanted to it doesn't really matter uh, we can also create a preset here and uh, that's what I did because I, I had two particle systems before and I basically wanted to copy one from the other and then make the second one a little bit brighter so you can use a preset for that it's a really nice feature um, next let's talk about noise so right now the particles just kind of jump in and sit there and that doesn't look good they're just they're way too static um, so then the noise module is really nice for that, um, but it can go a little crazy, so you have to really kind of harness the values and keep it under control. See right now it just looks like these amorphous blobs flying around. Um, that does not look like natural cloud behavior, and I, I probably had to tweak this for like 15 minutes before I had values that I liked. Um, but I'm just going to do 0 0.1, 0 0.5, damping is on, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, so I, I'm not going to explain these values right now. There is a really nice Unity series that talks about the noise module. Um, you can find that on YouTube. Um, but yeah, it's there's a there's a series by Unity Technologies that talks about these particle systems. I, there's there's specifically one about fire that's really really good. I highly recommend it. Um, so I'm just going to collapse these noise modules. And uh, the renderer module is the last extremely important one. So I have a cloud material. If I open my project window back up and dock that here, now I can click on cloud and that'll show me my material here. So basically I took the dissolve guide and we got the transparency from that. Why don't I open that back up in GIP? So I, I, earlier we had killed off all the black from this image. Now we can just take a part of this, so let's just select it and cut and then we can simply create a new from clipboard and now we want to export this as our cloud texture so I'll just say cloud 5 whatever I don't care what it's called export and I do TGA just because I know that 
I'm comfortable with that and it has transparency. Sometimes I forget which file types have transparency and which don't. Um, so I, th I think PNG does and it probably compresses it better. TGA is like a non-compressed file type I think. Um, I'm, not, I'm certainly not an expert there though. So anyway, I exported it as Cloud5, easy enough. And it, right now it does not have transparency so we need to click on it and make sure we do alpha is transparency in the import settings. Apply. And now you can see there's some alpha there. And then we're just going to right click and create a new material. And we'll call it Cloud5. And then we need to go up to the shader for the new material. We want to choose particles and additive. And then we can simply drop our new Cloud5 texture onto that slot. And that's what we're going to use for these amorphous blobs. So once again we need to select our particle system. So that was Fog Particles 1. And now I can just drag Cloud5 onto my default particle here. Um, and those don't look very good, surprisingly. So why don't we soften this up in GIMP. So for that I can simply use a blur. So let's blur this a few times. Um, and then just try exporting it again. Cloud5, replace, export. And it uh, looks like Unity brought that in already. Uh, we can also play with the soft particles factor. So why don't we drop that down quite a bit. And it's still looking really sharp on the edges. Not happy with that at all. So why don't we go into our color over lifetime and click on alpha and just drop this down. That is really not... Oh, well, now I'm editing the wrong particle system. Alright, so we have Cloud5 selected. And we can play with the alpha here. And, you know, it's still... It's not looking like I wanted it to. Um... I think the, the best thing here would be to go back and choose a different part of this image. I think that, that the part that I got is just a little bit too jagged. Uh, maybe if you chose this one or like this piece here, it would look more cloud-like. Um, and, and there's other things we could do to, to like make that space um, more evenly distributed. Uh, and for now, why don't we actually just go back to particle system and change the size to about uh, where's size start size why don't we set this to like 15 and already that looks quite a bit better all right so um, I hope this was helpful uh, we covered creating the moving um, sort of like diffuse color here using the node editor uh, and then we talked about the particle systems uh, let me see, was there anything else down here? Billboard, Cloud5, Sort Mode. Oh, actually, um, by distance is kind of important. Uh, what that does is sometimes Unity with with the um, layering, it'll do a weird thing where the cloud kind of moves into an object and then suddenly disappears. And uh, if you sort by distance, uh, the clouds don't really disappear as harshly when they fade into things. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.